Hello, all you virtual students out there. Today, we're going to be doing a lab, and it will probably last two days of time. But you could work on it at your own pace. It is called the percent composition of a marshmallow. All right, so think to when you're at a bonfire and you're roasting marshmallows. Have you ever wondered? I wonder what percent of this is carbon. Well, that's what we're going to be doing. So, yep, this is a marshmallow. Now, marshmallows are pretty much all sugar, all right? So you get a sugar high from eating too much of them. And the chemical formula for sugar is C11H22O11, all right? So we're going to be looking at just the carbon. We want to get rid of the O's and the H's. We're going to burn them and try to get rid of it okay and we know when we burn stuff all that's left behind is like the charcoal ash stuff all right when you burn food it looks like that the little black piece of fry or whatever so that's what we're going to be doing with marshmallows now this is always a fun lab to do in class because hey we get to eat some marshmallows after we're done but you all will be looking at your lab report and filling it out along with this video so you have your lab report open, and I'm going to help you along with some of this. We're going to look at the pre-lab questions together. All right, the first thing that we need to do is find this molar mass of this sugar. Okay, well, we calculate this a couple weeks ago, well, months ago. And we first, we wrote down what elements we have. Okay, and then I taught you to write down... How many you have of each? I got 11 carbon, I got 22 H's, and I got 11 O's. And then the next step that we did is we multiplied it by its average atomic mass, the atomic mass that you would find on the periodic table. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you just to help you along. It's 12.01 for carbon. It's 1.01 for hydrogen. And it is 16.00. All right, so you calculate these out. And then what we did next is we added those up. All right, you're looking for this answer. After you have this one, this one, and this one, you add them up, you find the molar mass. And we found that in the unit of grams per mole. So that's going to be important, the molar mass, because it's going to help us with the next question. All right, we're going to take the, to figure out the percent composition of this, and we're looking specifically at carbon. We're going to take the number that we got right here, that one, so the carbon, divide it the, by the molar mass. times 100, and this is going to give you the percent of carbon that we are looking for, all right? So you could go ahead and calculate those, but we are going to move on with the experiment. You could pause it and work on it, or you could come back and do that later, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to burn the marshmallows. Our answer right here, okay, that problem, that's this number. So, what we are going to do is this data table, okay? I'm going to have three marshmallows. One, two, three. I'm going to figure out their mass unburned. Th this is the marshmallow completely fine, just how it normally is. And then I am going to burn it. I'm going to burn it a lot. I'm going to burn it and try to remove the H's and the O's, which if you think you, when you're burning H's and O's, what... Well, chemical compound is made out of both H and O. Think about that one. All right, and I'm going to be left with just like this little husk of black charcoal -y carbon. All right, and then I'm going to measure out its mass and get those answers. All right, and then you need to figure out the average averages for all of them. All right, and that's going to be helpful for the questions. But we're going to go ahead and we are going to watch a video and fill out the data table, okay?
All right. Looking at percent. So let's begin. Let's do the lab. Percent composition of a marshmallow. Yay. Okay, so our first marshmallow has a mass of 6.671 grams. All right, then we're going to burn it. Definitely not going to burn it to the point that you would want to eat it. We're going way past that. If you try to eat this thing, that's just, just a health hazard. That's like a carcinogen, all right? That's nothing but not good for you. If you do like your marshmallows this burnt, there's something wrong with you. Don't eat it. All right, so my final after it's burnt is 1.619. All right, going on to number two. 6.913. We're rolling right along. <clears throat> Cook the marshmallows. So this is one of the, the best labs to do in school because we sat there and we, we, we could roast some marshmallows and eat them later on. But you just get this video version. I'm sorry. The key to a really crispy husk of carbon is the rotation. Got to burn off all the H and all the O. And so the mass burnt for this one is 3.739 grams. All right, now this one moves a little bit, so I'm going to end up giving you what it finally was. It's 7.044. All right, that, that, that one just wasn't perfect. <clears throat> but the marshmallow burnt the same. A little bit of sugar combustion right there at the end. Almost burnt. All right, getting that last measurement, it is 2.200. Okay, so now figure out their averages, and then we can move on to the question. Second part now, the second day, if you were separating this out, or if you wanted to make really one long day. And let's see if we can work out some of these problems. I'm only going to help you in a couple of these. All right, so theoretical yield of carbon in grams. So we're taking the present composition of carbon... So from our very first problem, all right, so this is from the front, and we're going to multiply it by the average mass unburned, and then divide that by 100. So you took the average mass of the unburned marshmallows, okay, you figured that out. So you're going to take times the average mass unburned, divide by 100, and you get this right there. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the next problem. It is the experimental, and it says the average mass burned is this number. 
not bad so far. And now we have to figure out your percent yield. You're going to take the ex experimental, so this, this one, okay, divide it by the theoretical, which is this one, and then times it by 100, and then you get this one. All right, now your percent yield of carbon should be, you know, less than 100%. If you got more than 100% if you were doing this, that means you didn't burn it well enough. But considering I did these, the experiment for you, I know you should get a, a number less than 100%. Um, okay, next part is you look at the questions right here and you will answer those. Once you do that, you should uh, submit your assignment and you should be good to go.